Last year, I crowned the new 15-inch Razer Blade as being one of the best gaming laptops you could get in that premium segment, and it's been updated this year with some new RTX hardware with other nice features. Now, older generations of Razer Blades have often had issues with thermals because the company is very focused on making their devices really thin and really nice looking, and when you do that, it just makes it harder to cool these things properly. So I was worried that this new GPU, like the new RTX GPUs, would run a little bit hotter, but it actually doesn't. Even their top of the line 2080 Max Q runs at acceptable temperatures. It's clearly not the coolest running laptop on the market, but it doesn't throttle for what I would consider like average gaming. Now, if you run in like a really warm climate, like if you're running in like South America or just places that are just ambiently really warm, then you're probably gonna get different results from me. I live in Canada, it's also the winter right now, but thermally, even the 2080 Max-Q, their hottest running GPU available, runs perfectly fine. Performance on this GPU is great. It's pushing out incredibly high frame rates, especially for a thin and light laptop. Now, when it comes to pricing or just like value and like bang for your buck, we'll get into that discussion a little bit, but I don't feel most people should be getting the top of the line 2080 Max-Q spec. I'll explain in a little bit. When it comes to video production, however, the 2080 Max-Q doesn't give much of a performance increase over the 1070. As it currently stands, I wouldn't pick up like the RTX devices just for video production. They're definitely more gaming oriented. There are a few other differences between the 2019 and the 2018 model. The 2019 is fractionally thicker, but it's pretty much imperceptible. Build quality still remains really good, and you can get in a black finish or a silvery white finish that they call mercury. I much prefer the silvery white look, partially because it doesn't have that glowing green logo up front, but if you like the green snakes, you gotta go for the black one. The webcam up at the top now supports Windows Hello. It's got an infrared camera, so you can log into your computer with just facial recognition, which is nice. Uh, the keyboards also had a little bit of a tweak. So previously, the Razer Chroma lighting did not light up for the secondary function of the function keys. like So like volume control, brightness control, you couldn't see that stuff in the dark. It was a little bit annoying if you wanted to adjust any of those things in a completely dark room, but now you can see all of those function keys. The trackpad remains unchanged. The shift button on the keyboard also remains unchanged. And I've said this in previous videos, but if you're new here, the right shift key is in a weird spot relative to the arrow keys and the question mark key. Like I'll sometimes hit shift up instead of shift question mark, but that's just a personal thing. I feel like people that know how to type properly don't use the right shift at all, but I'm just like that. I'm a bad typer. Okay, the rest of the device hasn't changed much physically. The speakers are still pretty good and the internals still remain the same. You still have access to the Wi-Fi card, RAM, and the SSD. The battery also remains unchanged, 80 watt hours, still getting around five and a half hours of battery life with the screen at 250 nits. Now, the question that I think is the most important with this particular uh, video is whether or not you should get the new 2019 razor blade now i did a video recently that told people basically not to buy the rtx gaming laptops right now just because i feel like for most of the market it's just not a good value compared to the 10 series devices that are available at relatively cheaper prices and that same kind of i guess message holds true with the razor blade but there's a little bit of a i guess adjustment when it comes to this particular device the configurations of the Razer Blade are currently quite expensive, and particularly the 2080 Max-Q. That is a model that is their top of the line flagship device, but the RTX 2060 device is not bad. At the very least, I think it's the best value of the bunch for most gamers. And I say this because that 2060 actually has pretty decent performance even compared to the 2070 max q i think for most gamers and this is just personal opinion it may just be the games that i play and the type of gaming that i enjoy but most people that i know play their games at lower quality graphics just to maximize frame rates like it's much more important for me to see my opponents to see my teammates and to be able to identify them really quickly on the screen than to see like a beautiful tree in the background and notice its shadows and light rays and stuff like that that's not as important to me. And I think for most gamers, they're kind of in the same boat. So if you take that same game and you crank the graphics, it now looks a little bit better. It's a lot more demanding on your system, but on a 1080p 15 inch screen, it doesn't look that different to me in terms of the gameplay. So I feel like in our current market with 1080p screens and games not really taking massive advantage of RTX ray tracing capabilities, for most people, they shouldn't be picking up the 2070 and 2080 Max-Q devices for this new Razer Blade. The 2060 is a solid option if you wanna go Razer Blade. And the last year's model, the 1070 Max-Q is still a really good pickup. Um, oh, one last thing, a note on the screens. So if you've 
followed CES earlier this year, Razer kind of showcased two new screen options that they could potentially bring into these devices. A 240 hertz panel, which is gonna be awesome for games, and a OLED panel that's gonna look amazing, like absolutely amazing for content creation. I have used OLED panels on laptops, they look magnificent. The blacks are really inky black because the pixels are off and the colors are really vibrant. So if you're interested in picking up one of those future screens, like they aren't available right now, but if you're interested in future screens, the OLED panel is perfect for content creation, but they're not great for gaming because the refresh on those are a little bit lower. The current 144Hz screens, fantastic for gaming, and even for myself that requires a little bit of color accuracy on my screen, it's good enough for video editing. So that's basically it. 2019 Razer Blade, solid device, very expensive, but just make sure you're picking up the right GPU for your needs. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.